Uh, all right, we got Paul Kangor uh, joining us. Paul Kangor, you might remember, is uh, the man who wrote the book on Frank Marshall Davis, Obama's communist mentor. Uh, Paul, welcome to The Blaze. Appreciate you being hey. here. <clears throat> Pat, it's great to be on with you again. Thanks. Seems like uh, Frank Marshall Davis' book was a thousand lifetimes ago by now, doesn't it? I mean, so <laughs> much has happened. It's unbelievable. Doesn't even seem like the same life. Yeah, no, that's right. Yeah, that book it was it was titled The Communist. I think it came out in 2010, right? Yeah, so, wow, yeah. ten years ago. And yeah, we we did that through through uh, Mercury Inc. And it was I remember Pat. We put the actual. In fact, yeah, you had something to do with this. I think I think you were one of the guys that suggested this. We mm-hmm. we put Frank Marshall Davis, who was Obama's mentor in Hawaii. <laughs> In the in the 1970s, we put his Communist Party USA number on the front of the book, <laughs> and I still re- I, 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 st- I still remember it. It's the number is four seven five four four, and I, I'm not looking right now. I'm not cheating, <laughs> and that was um, that was typical because they had they had five digit numbers, and we, we talked about this you and I and Glenn, and we we felt. Uh, you know, people are going to say, "Oh, how do you know he was a member of Communist Party USA?" Well, we, we even had the guy's five-digit party number, right? <laughs> right. So great, and, and, yeah. And and it's amazing. If you, I haven't done this in a while, but I'm sure if we checked, it would hold up. If you go to Wikipedia, people have emailed me about this over the years. If you look up Frank Marshall Davis at Wikipedia, I mean, at different times, they don't even mention that the guy was a communist. Oh and you know, yeah, and, and 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 you know, we did this almost 400-page book. We had a 600-page FBI file. I mean, you know, the wow. guy was a party member of, oh, yeah. of all things, yeah. right? He was an I official mean, but, communist. He, yeah, he was a card-carrying communist. Yeah, and, and so, I mean, there have never been in America at any time in the history of Communist Party USA any more than like maybe 50,000 party members. I mean, there were... There may be a million, say, small C communists, but but right. to join the party and and literally swear a loyalty oath to Stalin's Soviet Union, that was a big, big deal. Big deal. And, and the guy that mentored Obama did that of, of, of all things. You it know, you mentioned deal. you mentioned that that his his Wikipedia page doesn't even mention he was a communist. Let me just yeah. tell you the the first part of what it says: uh, Frank Marshall <laughs> Davis. Then it gives his birth date or or his lifespan. Uh, was an American journalist, <laughs> poet, right, right. political and labor movement activist, and businessman. No oh, <laughs> mention. No. Oh, no, okay, so I've got so the Wikipedia great. page up here, and I did a <laughs> Control-F search for communists. Three references on the Wikipedia page. One is that the Spokane Daily Chronicle described his paper as a red weekly, saying it has the oh, most geez. of the markings of a communist front uh, publication. There's a mention that he was investigated as possibly being a communist, and that's it. <laughs> that's that amazing. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah, yeah. No. So, okay, he, look, his, his Chicago newspaper was called the Chicago Star with a big red star on the front of it, <laughs> right? Every, every, everybody, call, everybody called it the red star. And wow, this is coming back to me now like a nightmare. <laughs> uh, he, he testified before the Senate in December 1956, which was run by Democrats, Mm-hmm. And you know, there he pleaded the Fifth Amendment. But I mean, you know, everybody knew he was a. There's no right, doubt he was right. a communist. Oh, absolutely. There's just absolutely. none <laughs> at all. So, I, I mean, it, and and the, so you mm. know, when when we were doing the book, right? I would say, uh, okay, so the question is, how much did he influence Obama? Right? We could have a debate on that, right? Mm-hmm. But, but but I mean, don't deny the absolute elephant in the living room. Right. The guy <laughs> was a card carrying communist. Right. Uh, and, and and also too, they want to say, oh, he was a civil rights activist. <laughs> oh, okay, well, all right, yeah, you know, he he fought against discrimination. I think, you know, that's cool. And and then the, <laughs> you know the, the next step is to say, oh, well, you're smearing him as a communist because because he fought for so you know you know what you are, you're a racist, <laughs> right? Right. It, it, it's just it's just it's it's nutty, and it's one of those deals where. 
it, it's so frustrating as a biographer, right? You know, that that book literally made the New York Times bestseller list. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you could search this quickly. Is the book even mentioned on the Wikipedia page? Oh, oh I doubt it. I we'll, me, we'll wow. check into that. Let me it's look. One, it's one of like two biographies of Frank Marshall Davis. <laughs> we'll look into that. Right? And and, uh, our, and our imprint at Mercury, it was an imprint of what Simon and Schuster. Yeah. It's not, it's not like like the book was published by you know you know uh, you know Wacko Press, right? right. That's right. No, Gee. It's, it's not mentioned. No. Uh, we're talking to Paul wow. Kangor, who is a <laughs> professor of political science at at Grove City College in Grove City, Pennsylvania. He's the author of a bunch of books, not just uh, the Frank Marshall Davis book. Uh, and his latest is The Devil and Karl Marx. Now, this is really important, too, because now we're getting getting to the heart of the matter of what's going on, really, in the United States of America with people turning to Marx and Marxism. And so many young people who think that socialism and communism are wonderful. They're, they're all about equality and the little man. They have no idea about the history of communism and and the man who in part founded it with Engels, uh, Karl Marx. And they don't understand that communism itself is evil. So give us a thumbnail sketch of, of just who Karl Marx really was. Well, well, the title of this, Pat, so, so I mean, I, I wrote books like God and, right? God and Ronald Reagan, God and George W. Bush, and, mm-hmm. and, and, the, and you know, this phrase, right, the devil and, you have the devil and Daniel Webster. It's kind of a classic mm-hmm. phrase. But 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 it but it fits in the case of Marx because Marx literally wrote about the devil, and you know I, I I open the book I have a couple of different stanzas from different poems that he wrote I mean the guy wrote poetry about the devil, and 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 one was called the Pale Maiden 1837 and and this one I think is really striking because I believe it's partly autobiographical in his case mm-hmm. he wrote Thus heaven I've forfeited I know it full well. My soul, once true to God, is chosen for hell. I mean, it's pretty, pretty chilling stuff. Wow. And there's an, uh, yeah, I know, I know. And there's another one he wrote called The Player in 1841. Look now, my blood-dark sword shall stab unerringly within thy soul. The hellish vapors rise and fill the brain till I go mad and my heart is utterly changed. See the sword, the prince of darkness sold it to me. Oh. I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty chilling stuff. Oh, my gosh. And yeah, yeah. And, and I mean, wow. he was, he fancied himself a poet. If he, you know, he even said if he, if he wouldn't have been a philosopher, by the way, he was a pretty crappy philosopher. <laughs> yes. Right? <laughs> yes. And, and an even worse economist. You know, we wouldn't even, even need to mm. go there. But, but he, you know, he was kind of like, um, you know, like Hitler really wanted to be a painter, <laughs> right? Marx, mm-hmm. Marx really wanted to be a poet. And, and you know, you know, this, this, is what, this is what drove him. He, was, he had this kind of infatuation with the dark side. He had a favorite line, which appears again and again in his writings, not just his poetry, but it's a line from Goethe's Faust, which was his favorite play. And Mephistopheles, the devil character in, the, in this Faustian bargain, he said, everything that exists deserves to perish. Everything that exists deserves to perish. And Marx mm. loved that line. And, and people who were around him said he would literally chant, not just recite, but chant, chant the lines from Mephistopheles in Goethe's Faust. So he had this really – that's creepy. Yeah, really creepy dark side, and, and and you know more than one biographer of Marx, including kind of the biographer. His name was Robert Payne. He wrote a biography of Marx, boy, almost fifty years ago. Actually, considered you know, was this man possibly possessed? And I I, I don't go there. Mm. I don't know that. Right to borrow mm. from Barack Obama, that's above my pay grade. Right, mm-hmm. but, but 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 he clearly had an infatuation. Um, with this dark side, and I think it shows up not just in his poetry, but frankly, his ideology mm-hmm. and, and what communism left to the world. Absolutely. Uh, all right, we, we, we're with uh, Paul Kangor. He's written The Devil and Karl Marx. We're going to get uh, deeper into the, the book and, and who this man was in just a second. Uh, Paul, not, not a surprise that uh, Karl Marx would have been fascinated uh, with Satan because... I, I firmly believe, and, and in my faith, we believe that communism is of Satan. Um, it's, it's force, 
It is. Uh, it removes choice from people. It uh, it brings misery and destruction. And so it would make complete sense that Marx was fascinated with the devil, wouldn't it? I mean, that just makes sense to me. Yeah, it would. In fact, uh, my faith as well, I'm, I'm Roman Catholic, and, and I could point to encyclicals going back to 1846. Yeah, it's two years before the Communist Manifesto was, was even published. Mm-hmm. And you know, the Catholic Church referred to it as a satanic scourge. Wow. Uh, yeah, yeah, orchestrated wow. by by the sons of darkness, and and thought that this was this was quite literally a, a, a flat out uh, d- demonic ideology, and and I actually have a quote here from from Robert Payne. He was the biographer of Marx. This is a, a, a Simon Schuster published this. This was a British literature professor. This guy wrote on on the arts, poetry. He was Pat. He was no right winger. All right, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and he wrote this. There were at times when Marx seemed to be possessed by demons, right? He had the devil's view of the world and the devil's malignity. Sometimes he seemed to know that he was accomplishing works of evil. Uh, yeah, I mean, phrases Jeez. like, you know, I will, I will howl gigantic curses at mankind, Marx wrote. I will howl gigantic curses at mankind. So again, you know, I, I don't go so far as to say, well, I know that about Marx, but we know about his atheism, and I mean, I, I detail examples like the Petesti prison in Romania, the communist prison where, where they literally tortured religious believers, they did black masses, they, they, they mm. took priests, and they made priests consecrate uh, uh, feces in the, in the form of communion wafers and shove them in the mouths. Oh my so gosh! It, it, it is it is stuff that is so sick. Wow! Uh, and truly diabolical that that you read it. It is. And, and, and it, listen, any any liberal leftist progressive listening now, I'm telling you, you read that. Have the honesty to sit down and read that, and even you will walk away and say, "Okay, all right, this is evil." Right, you know, the, I, I can't deny right. this is evil. Now, to what extent you want to link it to Marx? Okay, you know, Marx personally, fine. We could have that debate, but but you know, that kind of activity, and oh, let's not forget, you know, being responsible for the deaths of a hundred million people. Right, communist ideology. I mean, that, that's that's double the combined death toll of World War One and World War Two. I. I mean, that's that's pretty hideous. Now, how does Karl Marx? And for that matter, virtually all of the heroes of the left, how, how do they get away with being anti-Semitic, uh, r- with being racists, as Marx was, both anti-Semitic and racist, and they're still revered by the left? Yeah, it's a great question. In fact, here's, uh, here's a pop quiz for, for you in the audience. And I'll, I'll read the quote, and then you, you, get, you get a choice of two people, all right? Uh, quote, the emancipation of the Jews and the final analysis is the emancipation of mankind from Judaism. Oh, wow. Uh, so a clue. He's a German. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, not Hitler. Karl Marx. Karl Amazing. Marx, wow. right? The final analysis, the emancipation of mankind mm-hmm. from, from Judaism. And here's another one. Uh, this union of Jew, and, uh, of Jew and German on a Negro base was bound to produce an extraordinary hybrid. That's Marx. Um, here's another, mm-hmm. um, and Marx here is talking about his son-in-law, who he referred to as the gorilla or Negrillo, because he was from Cuba, and so he had some Negro blood in his vein, veins. Marx wrote, he has the, the blemish customarily found in the Negro tribe, that is, no sense of shame, by which I mean no sense of shame about making a fool of oneself. And I picked that one, Pat, because um, we, I, we don't want to anyway, but we can't use the N-word on the air. Mm -hmm. And uh, Marx's writings are, are, he uses the N-word, and and Marx's writings are just sprayed, littered with some of the most nasty Mm -hmm. anti-Semitic statements that you can imagine. And he gets away with it because he's Marx, he's a man on the left, a man of the left, and the Mm -hmm. left lets him get away with it. Mm -hmm. I just I don't understand that. I, I they hold every they try to hold everybody else accountable for that, but any of their own heroes, Margaret Sanger, Karl Marx, you know, Woodrow Wilson, all these people who are absolute racists and in fact wanted to eliminate minorities in the case of Margaret Sanger um, through yeah. eugenics, 
uh, they get a complete pass, uh, and and you never you, you can't even speak about that. Uh, right. In, in fact, in fact, if, if if leftists were consistent, right, you would have students right now in universities pounding on the office doors of professors with busts of Marx in their offices. Right. See, so take that down. He's a racist. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and the and part of it, too, you mentioned Sanger. A, a connection here is, is is that Sanger, like Marx and like Engels, was a very strict atheist, Dar, uh, Darwinian evolutionist. And, you know, there's very much a kind of eugenics aspect to this. And they mm. were talking about um, Marx and Engels were talking about Paul Lafargue. Now, Paul was. Paul was Marx's son-in-law, the, the one from Cuba. And Lafargue had been a political candidate for a, for a council seat in Paris. That, it was a district that contained a zoo. And, and so in, in, a, in a letter to Paul's wife, which would have been, again, you know, Mark, Marx's daughter, uh, Engels wrote this about her husband. Quote, being in his quality as that of a, and here he used the N-word, that is a degree mm. nearer to the rest of the animal kingdom than the rest of us. Paul is undoubtedly <laughs> the most appropriate wow. representative of that district. Unquote. And, and Engels, like Marx, they were very scientific about this. Right? He able he averred that Paul had quote one eighth or one twelfth you know n word blood. So these guys would sit there and kind of, you know, their, their, their Darwinian accuracy say, hmm, I wonder how much of a, you know, N-word he is. Hmm, I wonder how much Jewish blood he has. Hmm. And they, they, would, they, would, they would write about this. And I get, to, I get to give you one more quote here from Marx on Jews. What is the worldly cult of the Jew? Haggling. What is his worldly god? Money. Money is the jealous god of Israel before whom, who, before whom no other god may exist. And, and he said, the Israelite faith is repulsive to me. That's, that's Marx. Wow. So again, yeah, Pat, how do they get away with this? Yeah. If, if you have one quote like that, one, <laughs> yeah. from a Donald Trump or a Ronald <clears throat> yes. Reagan, oh, my goodness. John Wayne, right? right? They're totally oh, my goodness. They're, they're done. I mean, but, but people have Mark been, people have lost their livelihoods for Far less than that being tweeted seven, eight, ten, twelve years ago. Right, I mean, and you're Absolutely just true. done in, in society. It's really amazing. Yeah, um, yeah, Paul, explain explain who the Bolsheviks were and and the history of the Bolsheviks' war on religion. Yeah, they they were hideous. In fact, they they <clears throat> pursued what Mikhail Gorbachev called a war on religion. Uh, you know that's that's Gorbachev's own phrase. You know, Gorbachev, of course, didn't approve of it, but he said he said, yeah, our early predecessors conducted a vile attack on religion, and and Lenin said, mm. quote, all worship of a divinity is a necrophilia, a necrophilia. So, wow. folks, you might want to Google necrophilia. He he said there is nothing more abominable, mm. nothing more abominable than religion. Religion is the opiate of the masses, like Marx said. It's a kind of spiritual booze, right? Spiritual booze. And also, for our woke Christians out there right now, religious left types who are talking about how, you know, communism and, uh, you know, really was seeking to do the work of Christianity. You know, Lenin, Trotsky, Ingalls, Marx, on and on. Nikolai Bukharin said, said communism and religion are incompatible. Marx said communism mm-hmm. begins where atheism begins. So, so the idea to these guys that the two could be paired was was ridiculous, right? These two had nothing in common. A good communist must, in fact, be an atheist. That's what Lenin said. <laughs> how how have the communists uh, infiltrated churches and religious groups? Yeah, that 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 was one of the most shocking things I laid out in this book. In fact, really, the, the longest section. I think it's part four. It's about five chapters. It's even longer than the section on Marx, because really the book should be called The Devil on Communism. It, mm-hmm. it goes beyond Marx. But the infiltration of churches, Pat, was, was, was quite striking. And they went, after, they went after the mainline Protestant denominations in particular. And the three big targets were the Episcopal Church, the United Methodist Church, and what became Presbyterian Church USA. They, they also targeted the Catholic Church, they had much less success there, but, but the Episcopal Church, United Methodist Church, PCUSA, they, they, did, 
they did well. They, mm. <laughs> they did it. They did astonishing, astonishing, astonishingly well. And and the group in the in the United Methodist Church, it was the Reverend Harry Ward. It was called the Methodist Federation for Social Action, which we call you know today Met Methodist Federation for Social Justice. Social Action was a, kind of a another word for social justice. And that was it was a communist front group, the Reverend Harry Ward. And oh, by the way, the Reverend Harry Ward was a co-founder, along with Roger Baldwin, of a little something called the ACLU. Uh. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and wow. here is um, here's a quote from Earl Browder, General Secretary of Communist Party USA, speaking to Union Theological Seminary in New York, February 1935. Quote, you may be interested in knowing that we have preachers, preachers active in churches, who are members of Communist Party USA. So not just preachers who are sympathetic, yeah, Mm -hmm. but members, Mm -hmm. members. Yeah, we've gone a long way down that well. It's it's <laughs> it's really amazing. How we got we have about a minute left. How do we get young people to understand these things? They think socialism and communism are cool. They think they're about equality. How do we get the message through to them? Well, it's not easy, and it, this has been a frustration of mine for thirty years a- after the fall of the Berlin Wall. And AOC was what like four weeks old when the Berlin Wall fell, right? Mm-hmm. And you wonder how can people like her believe what they believe? Yep. Well, it's the educational system. Yeah. And so we they've taken complete respond. control, almost complete control of the educational yeah. system. It's and so all, all that we can do is respond with shows like yours, the Blaze, uh, you know, the Blaze Network, TV, radio, web, and your you book. Have to, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just have to educate, educate, educate. Yep. And we've got to try to do some you know, remedial education for where our K through 12 public schools and universities have completely failed. Paul, appreciate it. Uh, the book is "The Devil and Karl Marx." We're gonna we're gonna put a link to it yep. on uh, our a, Twitter page. It's at right Pat now. Unleashed. At Pat Unleashed. You and it. we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks, Paul. All appreciate right. It. Thanks, guys. Take care. I mean, that's chilling stuff. <laughs> that is chilling stuff.